You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is no like you. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo. I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing from the devotional and that's why we call it season five and all those videos from 2020 they're all loaded on my youtube channel my handle on youtube is Tamiya Gede, which is right on the screen i will encourage you to visit my channel not only to view those old open heavens videos which are a great study guide but most importantly to view the open heavens for the current day and i know that will bless you exceedingly and while you're on my youtube channel very 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 important please do not forget to subscribe like comment and share the lord bless you as you do now pastor adeboye led me to christ in october 1997 a few years back when i was in the university of lagos nigeria and west africa and that gives you a few scriptures from the bible and a memory verse and that helps you to understand the body of the text praise god so let's go straight into the daily devotional today is saturday may the 18th and the title of today's daily devo devotional is banishing fear banishing fear praise god so um it, it, it's amazing that that is talking about banishing fear today because yesterday we spoke about the open heavens devotional was talking about god hates lies and i was saying that I, um that i had a man of god teach that god is more concerned about what makes you what, what makes us lie than the lie itself and he was saying that the real cause of lying is fear and so we need to deal with the fear and god wants to deal with what made us afraid that made us lie Okay, now today that is talking about banishing fear, you know, and um, um, I had some things that I, I was uh, that I used to be afraid of, and so I confessed the scriptures. And one of them is in the book of Job, where he's, he talked about how God had clothed the neck of the horse with thunder, and how he the, the horse mocks at fear and is not affrighted. So I always confess that. In the name of Jesus, God has clothed my neck with thunder. I, am, I mock at fear and I'm not affrighted. So you quote the scriptures and that is going to teach us from the word of God how to banish fear. Now, our scriptural reading is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 10. I'll share other things that I, my other scriptures that I speak, that I declare regarding this. Matthew chapter 10 verses 26 to 31. Matthew chapter 10 verses 26 to 31. That's six verses and I'm going to be reading from the traditional King James Version and thus goes the reading of God's word. This is Jesus Christ our Lord who is talking to us. He says, fear, fear them not therefore for there is not, nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak in light, and what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the house tops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are uh, not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father, for the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Praise God. May God bless the reading of his word. So this is our Lord Jesus Christ. And he was generally exhorting the disciples. And he began to address um, fear. He said, fear them not. Um, that there's nothing that is hidden. This, and this is a, a principle of life that Jesus Christ is giving here. But there's nothing that is hidden that will not be revealed. Nothing that is hidden that will not be revealed. It's just a matter of time. But that it will not be revealed, it will come out. That's what Jesus Christ is saying here. And he was, you know, exhorting them for that. Then he said, do not fear those who can kill the body. Then in another trans in another of the synoptic gospels, he said, I'll show you who you should fear. Fear God who has the power to destroy not only body and soul in hell. No, fear not him who is able to destroy the body, but I'll show you who you should fear. Fear God who has the power not only to destroy the body, but also the soul in hell. Okay? Who is not, you understand? So the person that we need to fear is actually God because he has the final say. 
okay so he's the one that has the power to destroy both not only the body but the body and the soul in hell so don't fear those who can destroy the body fear god which we must fear god who has the power to destroy not only the body but also the soul in hell where is god you you understand so and then just christ is telling us here that two sparrows are sold for a penny you know and as cheap as that is that means they're not worth anything actually you can be they can be sold for free but or maybe but i won't get one free you know but they're sold two of them for a penny and as as they are none of them can die without god knowing without god being aware and it just because it's telling us that we are worth more than many sparrows so god is concerned about us Okay, so but Jesus Christ is dealing here the banishing fear is our topic. So the focus there is, and he said, Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more values than many sparrows. You see, and he said again, Jesus Christ said again, that our very the very hairs of our hair are numbered. So when we comb our hair and everything falls down, um, God is aware that serial number one million and fifty one has fallen to the ground. So God is very that means God is paying to attention to every detail of our lives every detail every detail the very hairs of our head are numbered praise god god is good this is the only god can do that only god in heaven can do that he's a mighty god banishing fear now the memory verse <coughs> excuse me memory verse is taken from isaiah 41 verse 10 isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 it says fear thou not for i am with thee be not dismayed, for I am thy God, thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. <clears throat> Praise God. Now, the thing about it is that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that, you see, even though we can't see God, he's in the picture. He's there. Ah, He will never leave us or forsake us. He's always in the picture. God is there. He's a very present help in time of trouble. Praise God. So God is, we have more value than many sparrows. God loves us. For God so loved us that he gave us his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And because we believe in Jesus, we will not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Now, let's go into the, to this to, to and, and look at this. You know, this is a scripture that we can memorize. Isaiah 41, that, and, and you know, fear thou not. God is saying, I'm with thee. I will not leave thee. I will not forsake thee. Um, in Hebrews 13, he said, I will not, I will not, I will not in any wise let you down, you know, or give up on you. He swore three times in the Amplified Classic Translation. I will not leave thee or forsake thee. He said, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. And we know very well that 365 times in the Bible, the word fear not comes up. Fear not. Even when the angel, when God sends an angel, the first, first thing that God, will, the angel will say is, I fear not, fear not. So there's one fear not for every day, 365 times in the Bible. So this morning, first thing that God is saying to us is, fear not, Sister Tayo. Fear not, Tayo. So fear not, fear not. It shall be well. It shall be well. Fear not. Now, that is starts with 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So God has not given, when I want to confess, I say God has not given me the spirit of fear, I, but of power, of love and of a sound mind. So I am powerful, I am loving, and I am mentally sound. Praise God, that's my confession. I am powerful, God said power, love, and a sound mind. So God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. So I'm powerful, I am loving, and I am mentally sound. Praise God. That says the above passage tells us clearly that the Holy Spirit with God gives to us is not a spirit of fear. This also implies that fear is not a feeling, but a spirit. And that spirit is not from God. As Christians, whenever we find a spirit that is not of God around us, we must banish such a spirit immediately. And Daddy prays for us. He says, today, fear is banished in our lives in Jesus' name. And I say, amen. And you say, amen, also. So that is saying to us that um, God has not given us the spirit of fear. So fear is not a feeling. It's a spirit. You know, that's what that is explaining to us here. This is what the Bible is saying. It's not a feeling. It's a spirit. And it's not from God. Because God did not give it to us. 
So, and anytime that is saying that anytime we are anywhere and there's um, any if any spirit that is not of God, we should cast it out as a Christian. If you're born again and you have the Holy Spirit, we have the power to cast out devils. Jesus Christ said in Mark 16, verse 17, that these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. So, you know, um, yes. Like you get somewhere and they are fighting and they are fighting. Then you cast out the spirit of confusion and a strife and every spirit of every evil work. You speak to that spirit and command it in the name of Jesus Christ to depart. That's how we cast out the spirit of fear. When there's trembling, trembling. And, you know, um, fear opens the door for many things. And that's what happened to Job, you know. We learned from the Bible that he said the very thing that he feared came upon him. Because this was a praying man, this was a man that feared God. You know, why did the things that happened to him happen to him? He said the very thing that he feared came upon him. He voiced those things that he feared. Never voice, we must never voice our fears in the name of Jesus. We voice our faith. We voice our faith. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of, we have the spirit of power. We have the spirit of might. We have the spirit of love. And we have... We are mentally sound in Jesus' name. So, and daddy prays that today fear is banished in our life in Jesus' name. Daddy then says, the antidote to fear is faith. Ephesians 6, 16 says, above all, taking up the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. When this scripture was written, soldiers had to go to war with shields and it was essential for their survival against the attacks of the enemy likewise we are to quench the fiery darts of the enemy with the shield of faith hallelujah so in in when when um um paul was talking about the armor we should put on the whole, whole armor of god one of the armor is the shield of faith he said we should take up the shield of faith where we are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one so it's, satan is currently Con, uh, constant, consistently firing that at us. So um, we should take up the shield of faith. And the Bible says that um, the word of God, we believe, therefore we speak. So you see, our faith is, mm, antidote to fear, to fear is faith. Okay, so <laughs> I heard uh, a woman of God say that when fear knocks at the door, send faith to go and open it. Amen. So the the um we believe. David said we believe. Therefore, we speak. So the, you see, our faith is based on the word of God. So when anything makes us afraid, we must declare the word of God, because the word of God is quick and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, up to the bones and the marrow. It's a weapon of our warfare. The word of God. That's what Jesus Christ used against the devil. Amen. It is written, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. I refuse to fear. Don't say the Lord unto you, sister Tyre. Fear not. I refuse to fear. My neck is closed with thunder. I mock at fear and I'm not affrighted. In Hebrews 11, no, Hebrews 13, it says, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. The Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear or dread or be terrified. What can man do to me? That's the Amplified Classic translation of Hebrews 13. So it, it, it says we should, and, and Daddy was saying that you saw the, the shield of faith is what soldiers used to, without the shield of faith, many soldiers would die. So because when the, if you watch those old, the olden classic films, you see when they're fighting, the soldier will hold his shield, you know, and the shield are sometimes very, very heavy. And then they hold the sword in their other hand so when the enemy uses a sword on them that they, they you know they put their shield of faith it delivers from death without a shield of faith and once the shield falls off their hand the you know the rest it, it, it it's they can get killed so we must hold up the shield of faith and we must grow our faith i'm sure that they will talk okay let's go on what are these fiery darts fiery darts they are the imaginations through which the spirit of fear creeps into a man's life and this is why second corinthians 10 5 says casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ 
fire with that so that they come through imaginations so you see when when in the temptations when jesus christ was being tempted by the devil when he was in the wilderness you certainly didn't come as a physical person he was he was he was imaginations you know and jesus christ was answering jesus christ showed us the, how we do it how it's to be done it is written and satan doesn't go after one 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 arrow of the word of god he keeps coming back it keeps coming back and so that's why we must know the word of god you see and um fear creep that it says that there are imaginations through which the spirit of fear creeps into a man's life also we have to be very careful you're watching horror movies all day you know that's all you're feeding your that your mind when something just moves in the corner you see your village people have come again so be very very careful what you feed into your mind okay so we cast down imaginations casting them down casting them down in the name of of jesus christ it is written god has not given me the spirit of fear i'm above only and not beneath it is written with long life god satisfies me and shows me his salvation uh, i'm going to grow to a, an old ripe age my eyes shall not be dim and my natural force shall not be abated it is written you know so that's how we you you cast down those imaginations i cast down those imaginations in the name of jesus christ in the name of Jesus. So you have to use the word of God. You have to know the word of God. You have to be studying the word of God. You can't sit down on Saturday and say you want to relax. And you're relaxing with Nollywood. Five. Only you. You know. Those are faith quenchers. You're not, you have nothing to gain. Unless it's. You understand. You, it's something you can learn from a Christian movie. That is adding scriptures to scriptures. You know. So you don't have time. For all that nonsense. Okay, the knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of Christ casts down fearful thoughts and imagination. The more of God you know, the more aware you are of his power and love for you, the less afraid you will be. You must subject every negative thought to the truth of God's word. When thoughts come, you should respond with the word of God that counters them. As you do this over and over again, you will, be, you will overcome those fears. So you see... Um, and I remember a man of God also said that, um, you see, if by the time you're studying the word of God every day, within three months, fear will be banished. As we are feeding our, you see, because the word of God is a spiritual something, you know, so it, as we feed on the word of God continually, every day, every day, by the spirit of God, by the grace of God, our faith is strengthened. Our faith is strengthened, you know, and when something happens, the, you know, like when you squeeze an orange, when temptations, when you squeeze an orange, the word of God will come out of you because that's all you have been, that's all that is in your spirit anyway. But if all you have been listening to is um, Nollywood and Bollywood and Korean wood and all those things, you know, your spirit will be, will be confused, you know. So it's the knowledge of the, the Holy One. That's what Jesus Christ did. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So it is the knowledge of God that casts down that you can use. Because the Spirit, and you know the thing is this, praise God. Let me just say this. Because I thought about this when I was studying this. You see, when something comes against you and you use, it is written, don't expect that the first time you say it, that it will go. It's like cutting down a tree. When you want to cut down a tree, you may strike it once. Is that make, going to make the tree fall? No. If, I, if you leave it again, it's continue to grow. So you have to keep using the word. Keep using it. It will look as if it's not falling. Oh, no, 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 no. The word is, of God is quick and powerful. It's alive. I said the word of God is a living thing. So keep striking. Keep sending the word of God to that, that area. Keep sending. All of a sudden, one day it will just disappear. And then also deal with the roots. Okay, deal with the roots, you know. You cannot know God without studying his word. Hence, to truly banish fear from your life, you need to study God's word consistently. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we need to be studying. And that's why we go to church, so we can receive God's word, okay. And we all on our own must have a study life. You must study the word of God every day. It's a habit that we have to form. We have to teach our children to begin to study the Bible on their own, their children's Bible. They must study. They must go to children's church. We must be studying the word of God. Amen. The altar, the family altar must return in Jesus' name. Praise God. Faith, comment by hearing. Listen to messages. Instead of playing all these uh, worldly songs while you are in your car, put on the Bible on tape. Put on a message, you know, that your pastor has preached and listen. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That it says, the more of God's word you that you consistently listen to, the more your faith will grow. This will ensure that there is no room for fear in your heart. Study the word of God and meditate on it every day. Memorize his word. Oh, wow. 
God, glory to God, memorize his word, especially the portions that speak specifically, specifically to the fears you have. As God's word dwells richly in our hearts, every form of fear will disappear. So that is says we must study the word of God and meditate on it every day. Memorize the word, especially the portion that speaks about, you know, like if you're having financial challenges, you know, you know what to, to say. That the Lord shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. As God's word dwells richly, your form of fear will disappear. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's key point studying and meditating on God's on the word of God banishes fear. The word of God is the only thing that can deal with fear. No, no, nothing. Both faith cannot do it. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you because Jesus Christ is the word of God made flesh. Thank you for the Bible. And thank you for your Holy Spirit, whom is our, who is our teacher. The Bible says that all God's children shall be taught by God. Father, we thank you for blessing us with your, your word. This is our hope in the land of the living. We give you thanks. Help us, Almighty God, to study, to show ourselves approved unto God. Help us in the name of Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father. Help us to desire your word more than our necessary food in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray that anything that has hindered us, every form of laziness that has hindered us from studying the word of God, we take a stand against it in the name of Jesus Christ. We scatter that evil altar that is hindering us from studying the word of God. We come against every spirit of laziness in the name of Jesus Christ. We hunger after your word. We desire your word more than our necessary food in Jesus' name. And thank you because you have opened our understanding that we may comprehend the scriptures and that we go from faith to faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this blessed you. Well, while you're on my channel, very important, please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And God bless you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And feel free to share this on your social media platforms. And the Lord bless you. My name again is Sister Temi Tayo. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless you. Have a beautiful Saturday. And I'll see you tomorrow.